Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of The Rock Experience with Mike Brunn. Today is the 40th anniversary of the classic Kiss album, Creatures of the Night. I was fortunate enough to interview Vinnie Vincent for over two hours, talking exclusively about this era. Talking about how he ended up joining the band, how he was writing songs with Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons, what the photo shoots were like, what the tour was like, and so much more. You could find the full interview if you're watching this on YouTube. I'll link it down below so you can watch that if you want. If you're listening on one of my podcasts over there, look for episode number 21 for the full two-hour interview. However, over here what I wanted to highlight is Vinnie Vincent's thoughts and comments on the production of the album. Now, so many KISS fans love the drum sound and think that Eric Carr got a great sound on that album, and certainly I agree with that. However, Vinny had a little bit of a different point of view. Why don't you give a listen to what he thinks about the production and let me know what you think and let me know if you agree or disagree with Vinny. I'd love to hear your comments. Alrighty, let's roll the tape and hear what Vinny Vincent has to say about the album Creatures of the Night and the production on it. Um, what I do remember about Creatures is that uh, I wasn't satisfied with the way the mix of the album had come out. Um, the mix of the album I thought was terrible. It, it was all drums. There was no power behind it. And one day, I'm talking about the final release of Mixes. But one day, we're all in a recording studio, and I, it was the record plant, and I, this, this I remember very clearly. They've given the record to a guy named Bob Clear Mountain to, to mix. Mm-hmm. And uh, the record had been finished, and everybody had been called into to the record plant to hear the mixes that Bob made. And uh, I had no idea what to expect. And all I remember, I never heard them other than that moment in at the record plant. And all I remember was saying to myself, my God, oh my God. This is wicked, you know. And this is this is this is just sheer power. This is what I remember saying to myself mm-hmm. at that time, mm-hmm. and it knocked me on my butt, just knocked me right on my ass. Mm-hmm. And I thought, my God, this is really fantastic. But they didn't like it. Interesting. The powers didn't like it, and I thought, you don't like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> really? I mean, if you don't like this, then I, I don't know what to say, you know? We're living on two different planets, but okay, it doesn't <laughs> matter. What What's my opinion matter? It doesn't matter. But, you know, as, a, as somebody who had a vested, very invested interest in that record and wanting to hear the the, the incredible potential of what that record really had, Whatever mixes I heard were were fantastic, absolutely mm-hmm. fantastic. And then I was not there during the final mixes of the record. When I heard it, I was severely disappointed. And uh, I thought, geez, all I hear are drums. There's no power. You know, what happened to those, like, like Mike Tyson punches, you know? Mm-hmm. I was like, boom, one, one hit, and you're on your ass. You're knocked out. That was what those mixes that Bob Clear Mountain did for those records, mm-hmm. for that record. But it was what it was. I mean, I think they were looking for Led Zeppelin, huge drum sounds, and everything else came secondary. And everything else was in my in my ears, to to my ears, everything else was small sounding. It sounded big because there were big drums. Right. But as a as a overall one two punch and you're out cold, it didn't have that to me. So, so if you were going to uh, mix the album, what would you do differently? Well, the power was there, mm-hmm. you know. The recorded power, the recorded instruments were there. Um, when Gene played bass, he ripped my fucking face right off. Mm-hmm. So when I heard, when I ever heard, when I hear him play bass, when he just picks up his bass, uh, I'm going, man, I, I want to play. Just let me plug in. And get Eric and let's play, you know. And that's that's how 
playing with him was. I love playing with Gene. You know, mm-hmm. he was my he's my favorite bass player, still to this day. Okay, um, it's just sheer sheer power, just raw power, and that power was there. All the all the all the all the actual guitar sounds and the bass and everything was there. It just was secondary. If I were to mix that record, I would make them primary, bring the drums down, and make it all equal in, into one consolidated, you know, uh, uh, anvil metal, you know, some, something that is made of metal, something huge, round, like a, like a wrecking ball. Mm-hmm. And it's, it was all there, but it just got secondary treatment and the drums got primary treatment and I, I would do it much differently if it was me. Anyway, you know, mm-hmm. water, a lot of water under that bridge and Excellent. the record is what the record is. It's a great record. You know, the songs are great and it has a sound all its own, but it's not the sound I would have chosen for that record. You know, could have gotten all of that, but much more powerful. Alrighty. There's Vinnie Vincent's thoughts on the production of the Kiss Creatures of the Night album. What do you think about his thoughts and comments? I certainly love the sound of the album, but thinking about it from a point of view of a guitar player, I could understand his point of view about wanting the guitars more predominant in the mix. But like I said, I absolutely love the mix and I don't know that I would change anything. But what do you think? What are your thoughts about what Vinnie said? I'd love to hear what you have to say. Also, if you enjoyed that little snippet, I have over two hours of a conversation with Vinny all about the Creatures era. You're going to want to check that out. If you're watching this on YouTube, I've included the link below. If you're listening to one of my podcasts, check out Vinny Vincent Creatures interview and you're going to love what you hear. I guarantee it. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button below. If you're listening to one of my podcasts, subscribe over there as well. Also, head on over to Facebook and follow my page, The Rock Experience with Mike Brunn, where each and every day we talk about all the rock and roll music that you love. You could also follow me on Instagram and Twitter as well. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you all next time.